Hey everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well, stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. I am super excited to introduce you today to Simone Gordon, who is an astrologer, um, intuitive, uh, I think there's so much more to that. So maybe you could just introduce yourself, Simone. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Emma. Thank you for having me. Okay, so to, to, to start off with where you were yeah. going with it. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot in my toolkit and it's really difficult to often like classify me as like what human am I that's showing up for people? But I love that. <laughs> it's in your design too, by the way. Oh, <clears throat> you well, you literally have a channel called the Jack of all trades, but please continue. <laughs> hey, we want to find out more about that. Yeah. So I'm a qualified counsellor. Um, I specialise in psychological astrology. Yes, I'm an intuitive or clairvoyant. And I've also had an, oh, decades of business experience and various other things in my background in various industries in which has assisted me to understand how to best serve my clients when their professionals run their own business or in career, as well as shifting their insides. I'm also working on their external business or their, um, their career in some way. Wow. Oh my God, I love that. And you've said so many things. I'm, I'm already taking notes. Um, and for the, the listeners out, out there, um, Simone is a 3-5 emotional MG cross of consciousness. So super powerhouse. You're an absolute powerhouse. And you're actually what we call a split definition where um, you've got two areas of your, your definition. Your definition is like your consistent, reliable energy. Um, and one of those areas of definition is a, a manifester channel. So it's kind of like you're, sometimes you're going to feel really like a manifester and other times you're going to feel more like a generator. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're still a manifesting generator, which basically means you are on the planet to do what really lights you up and excites you, be multi-passionate. You do have the gate 34, like all of the really cool stuff. It sounds like you are on track with. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, definitely. I'm, cool. I'm resonating with that. <laughs> I love it. So one thing that you, um, you said that I just want to touch on straight away is the psychological astrology. What's that? Well, it's looking into the themes and the possibilities and the shadow that one contains when they're incarnating on this planet and being able to very quickly determine what's, what are we working on that's suppressed and what do we need to build up that's the potentiality? And in order to get to that place, we are moving through old blocks, beliefs, thought forms that are inhibiting the possibilities and are exacerbating the shadow. Yeah, wow. I love that. I love the idea of bringing together these, you know, more ancient wisdoms with the, the modern sciences, if you like. I really love that that whole concept. And I know when we did our session together, um, you took me through a process that, you know, I call, I do it a little bit differently. I call it a defining moments process, but it's a really similar process. Um, and, you know, putting it all together with all the other modalities. I just think it's so incredibly powerful. Um, tell us a little bit about your corporate career. So what did you do before you did everything else? Yeah. So, I mean, part of my corporate career was because I'll just start with that is because I was hiding from the work that I do now and I didn't want to show up. And I, I was always basically hiding in the closet and pretending to be somebody else, which <laughs> I was good at, Yeah, um, but it was unfulfilling. And as you yeah. said before, I need to have something that fulfills me. Yeah. So the corporate career, well, basically an entrepreneur from the age of 20, where I started a fashion business and then I morphed it. I got bored of it. It wasn't really lighting my fire. So I morphed it into 
creating a business for styling businessmen in Melbourne. And I had about 400 clients on the books. And then I got a little bit bored of that. So I sold that. And then I went into uh, spiritual events. So I created something on the Gold Coast doing that. Wow. Then I was construction with my, my ex-partner, um, created that business from the ground up. I was involved in the stock market, predicting what the stock market would do as well. Unfortunately, I got a bit bored of that. So, <laughs> yeah, I moved on. And I was also working for the Cotton On Foundation. Um, I was contracted to head up their sustainability pillar in Uganda. So that was community development, um, food and water security, because I have a background in agriculture. And, wow. yeah, there, there was... Uh, I was doing catering, I was doing retreat, um, you know, running a retreat center as well. There, there's many different things that I was playing with and gaining experience so that I could understand how business structure and people and management and your goal setting and manifestation. And so it was a big trial of what are my possibilities? How far can I go? And as soon as I'd accomplished what I'd wanted, the boredom had set in, which was basically yeah. my soul saying, uh, move on, next, please. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love that. And I want to talk about being in the spiritual closet because I resonate with that. But I just want to touch, like, on your human design, like, you literally have this gate, gate 35 in your design earth, which is all about, like, light, your purpose. And this gate is the gate of experiences. Like, it's the ultimate human experience that, now I have done all these things. I have all this wisdom kind of theme. So I love just to hear you talk that, to speak that, that you know, that's kind of the journey that you've experienced. I think one of the, the beauties of human design is it's not telling us what we need to do at all. It's just telling us that, you know, who we're here to be. And in that, that way, it gives us permission to let go of all of that conditioning, because I would imagine that probably not now, but maybe at the beginning of your journey, you were a bit like, God, why can't I stick at anything? But as a manifesting generator, you're not designed to. Like none of us, I'm an MG as well. And, you know, just to know that I'm a non-linear being, not meant to do one thing, like, oh, thank goodness. Because the thought of doing one thing just makes me want to like punch someone in the face. Well, it makes me want to vomit. So we're, yeah. on, the same, we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, okay, to, to, to answer that, yes. Um, it was like, why can't I just stick at something? Why do I keep on like having to let it go and letting it go maybe even before I could, like with the stock market, with the financial um, astrology where I was predicting the market. And I was working with a stockbroker who like, they, you know, my nickname was the Oracle and I didn't actually want to leave it, but the soul was making me do it. You know, like mm -hmm. it was like, it wasn't resonating anymore, even though the ego wanted to stay in it. So there's, there is this tension that I was embodying where why can't I stick at anything? And so the failure paradigm would come up. So I needed to deal with that. But as you say, with the human design and also my astrological chart, which are very much aligned, my work here is to experiment with life. And experimenting with life, there's a much bigger picture unfolding. And so all of these jack of, you know, the, what do you call it? Jack of, jack of all trades. Jack of all trades, but master of none. There is a purpose to that. And I've now in my, you know, later years of what we would possibly call wisdom, um, I'm beginning to realize that all of these bits and pieces that I've experimented with are leading to a much bigger picture in which I'm just about to unfold and move into uh, a, another project which has been the, the really the sum of the parts that I've experimented with. That yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. And you're also a line three, and that's the experiential learner. So all of this is so, so beautiful um, to share. And I love how um, just super aligned you are, you know, like trusting your own decisions, even though they wouldn't have necessarily looked like everybody else's. And that kind of brings me back to this spiritual closet piece. I really love talking about this because a lot of my listeners um they do have this experience so I was the same I was in advertising then really long story short I ended up um, becoming a master coach behavioral coach um you know did I had a lot of profiling tools certifications under my belt worked with c-level executives ran workshops you know trained teams did all this sort of thing and when I discovered human design I was like oh God, I can't tell anyone about this. You know, I can't, 
Like, it's a bit weird. I have to ask for people's birthday. Um, and it's not that I didn't believe in the spiritual side of things. It was just that, that like my identity, all of my conditioning from my childhood was like, it has to be intellect. It has to be science. It has to be these things. And of course, the more I learned about all of these things, I would then go and read a, I don't know, a manifestation book or some sort of spiritual book and be going, oh my God, quantum physics and metaphysics are just pretty much the same thing, right? Like everybody's saying the same freaking thing. So as you went through that journey, like what was it, how did you actually start sharing these more spiritual tools and how did you navigate that whole, oh, is it safe out there for me to talk about this or do I need to stay in this corporate arena? Well, uh, it's funny, during um, the cotton on stint over in Uganda, the team I worked with, even though as corporate and professional and efficient, you know, as you get, as far as corporate is concerned, they had this side where they would automatically uh, talk to me about things that were going on. And I would pull out my chart. And well, I'd I'd ask, do you want to do it this way? And they say, yeah, 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 I'm really interested. And so I would talk to them about what was going on. And so, you know, minds were blown. And it it really enforced, I mean, and I had been doing that for years where people come through the various outlets of my business life and I would just off the cuff talk about what I was seeing and what was going on for them. And that was really life-changing. So at the end of the cotton on, which I knew it was coming to coming to its, its finite date, I decided that I was going to now honour the gift that I had and take it to the outside world. And that wasn't easy either because once I'd made the decision, then it was, oh, okay, is this right? Is what I've mm. said correct? You know, this is, there was a lot riding on just this aspect of me as opposed to the, the mechanic and the, uh, the CEO, the, you know, the, the efficient professional one that was relying on logic and rational brain. Now I was relying so much more on the intuitive, which seems like guesswork, but... I had to actually trust that what was coming through for these people that I could only see through symbology and through what was on a chart and what was coming through psychically was going to land and was going to assist in some way. So there's a lot of faith on my behalf. And then there's the feedback that I gained from the people who I'm doing it with. And then after that, like, for example, um, I had a client ring me yesterday after you know, I mean, probably about three years of off and on working with her. And she said, everything you told me a couple of years ago has come to pass. You know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, this is where I'm at right now. And I'm like, okay, okay. So that's further faith within what I said astrologically. And now you're turning up knowing what is right for you at the right timing that you need to proceed with what I had spoken about. I love that. I love that. And you know what I'm hearing? It's that like, it's all about you building trust in you and the client building trust in themselves, you know, like in these non-tangible subtle energy spaces. And, you know, that's been a journey for me. Um, I don't know if I've shared it with you. I've shared it with the, with the listeners a lot. Like I didn't think I was intuitive at all, but it actually turns out I'm super intuitive. It's just that I wasn't trusting what was coming in. Um, and crazily, I would trust it in a client session and just put it down to, oh, I'm just well-educated as opposed to, no, no, it's coming through you. It's not, you know, it, it's something greater than that. And I think that a lot of people, especially the listeners, like that journey between being, putting all your faith in the mind and, or being a person that used to put all the faith in the mind. And we're now at this place where we want to build the muscle of intuition um, what would you like? What advice would you give people when they're learning to trust their own intuition? Good question. Is that that little voice, that very subtle voice in the background? Write it down. Like if something is coming through, write it down and hook into your feelings. Because if it's expansive and it feels right, then you're 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 in your intuition. If it feels contracted or if it feels noisy or messy in some way, then it's more likely the ego. So when we're looking at intuition and how to navigate it, feeling based, trusting that your feelings, does it feel light? Does it feel 
happy? Does it feel right um, uh, in respect of the decision that you're about to make where you're, in, in where you're heading? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And something I have not heard a lot is that, um, you know, like messy, noisy in the mind. I think that's really powerful. Like that, that's really cool. Like when you're out of alignment, um, I love that. So let's talk a little bit. I want to talk about the session. Of course I want to talk about my session. Um, it was so, pardon. <laughs> let's go for it. That yeah. was awesome. I loved your session. Oh my great. God. It was so much fun. And it was one of those things, like I turned up um, and I, I like 99.9% of the time I have an intention and w- I turned up and you asked me like, what do you want me to focus on or whatever? And I was like, oh my God, I don't know. I don't know. And it took me some time. And then sort of reluctantly, I'm like, well, this, this is the stuff that we're working towards in the business. I'd love to hear your read on that. And what I loved was, of course, you're like, oh, good, because that's what I, that's what I'd already focused on. Now, what I love about, um, and I've probably not had a lot of sessions with um, astrologers per se, but what I really loved about this session was that the, I don't know, like it was, it was like the detail or the accuracy of what I was moving towards. It was like, you weren't just seeing it in the chart. It was like, you were seeing the story almost come alive. Is that true? Or was that my interpretation? Like, it just felt like it was so tangible for you. Yes, well, you're absolutely right. So I'm looking at the chart, but what's coming at me is I'm reading your vibrational information that is inherently the thought forms in which you are projecting into the future that I am seeing that is going to transpire, but I'm also seeing the blocks or the issues associated with struggle to get there. And so I'm reading you vibrationally, but I'm also seeing the chart the cycles, the potentiality, the issues. So there's a whole heap of information that is coming in that I'm reading at the time, which is why I'm able to give you such a full kind of account Mm. of what you want to know, where you're heading, what are the problems to get there. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so with the future-based, you know, looking at the future-based stuff through astrology, that like that always kind of fascinates me because obviously it's you looking ahead into the different, you know, movements and transits and all of those sort of things. Um, And I suppose in the past, before I became very woo, I was like, "Mm, aren't we just creating it with our own mind? But I think like partly what you're saying is, well, yes, we do because it's our frequency and that's what we're sort of putting out into the future. And what's just come to me, it's one of the questions that I always wonder with human design is like, are we just all running around trying to create things, but really all we're doing is just following this energetic path because our, our design says this or our astrology sort of trajectory says that. So do you think that it's like, I know this is kind of not even a really well-constructed sentence, but I'm wondering like, are we just, when we're in alignment, following our soul's purpose, are we just fully surrendered and following this amazing journey? Um, Because what's coming to mind is like, we talk about free will. We talk about, we can create consciously create whatever we want. And I've often wondered like, "Mm, can we, can we really consciously create manifest anything we want? Um, Because I'm curious about, I don't think we can necessarily manifest anything we want, but we can manifest anything that's correct for us. And it's that journey of learning to surrender to that process and oftentimes, you know, in our, our astrology or our human design, it's going to show us the direction we're going in and where we have free will, let's say, is the choices we make about, you know, what this journey means or what that lesson means or what that could be or that potential could be. It's not really a question, but I'd really love to hear, like, what do you feel about all of that? I feel like you've got so much wisdom around this. So I'd love to hear your opinion. Oh, thank you. Um you ask some brilliant questions. I've got to say oh, that. Oh, thanks. Because <laughs> like, it's like, oh, the nature of the universe. How does that work? Yeah. Well, let, me, let me attempt to give you something around what I've understood from astrology over all these years and also just experimentation with life. So astrology is, look at it as a blueprint and something that we've incarnated to work with on a soul level, but that then ties into time and timelessness in not in the way that we perceive it in our linear 3d time as we know it right now 
So if we try and extract, which is really difficult to get one's head around, um, the timelessness, before we incarnated, we're already choosing what experiences and potentiality and work we're going to be doing in our flesh and bones body. And then as we incarnate, those cycles are representing what we've already chosen to enact and to experience. But because we are kind of asleep in this 3D level, we're not remembering or seeing it from a much more larger universal um, eagle eye perspective. We're caught in the minutiae of life and we're constantly reacting to life. Thereby, it seems like we are up and up against ourselves and struggling but when we feel like we're in alignment we're in alignment with what we have already chosen to experience and the road that life is taking us down at particular time junctures nodal points of evolution which the astrology the astrological chart shows up so beautifully ah here's a pivot here's a relationship here's a career change and it depends on what, I mean, the unique story that we bring to it. I mean, I think from that perspective, yeah. and I look, I, I don't have the answer to that, but just from my own experience, we can create stories around the destruction of what needs to leave our reality. So it could it could be really messy or it could be a, a, a more peaceful transition. I think that's more our choice. Yeah. However, the transition will occur. Because on a soul evolutionary level, we are being asked to change and metamorphosize the, the crystallis, the caterpillar, in, you know, the, sorry, the caterpillar crystallizing into the butterfly so that we can experience something else that we already chose to do. So just yeah. getting, yes, getting our heads around time is not what we make it. It's already, it's happening simultaneously. And that is already being shown in physics, block time. Yeah. yeah and quantum physics and string theory they're all and multiple universes if if you're seeing a lot of that coming through the movie scene yes yeah. multiplicity of different realities which is so fascinating in itself to work with but nonetheless a lot to do with time and, and timelessness and things being um occurring simultaneously oh and my god i love what a great freaking answer i absolutely love it i love it um, and I totally agree. And, and as you were speaking, it just comes back to like one of the, the fundamental principles of human design is that we are moving from the head to the body, basically for our own guidance, you know, like we have our own internal yeah. guidance system. So yours is um, you're an emotional authority. So that's your, your emotions are your internal guidance system. You also have um, the gut, you have the, the instinct and intuition, the spleen, um, so you have a lot of internal guidance system that's consistently turning up the same way all the time. Other people, it just sort of ebbs and flows and it might look different, different ways, depending what energy they're in. But um, as you're speaking, I'm just thinking like, isn't this just what we need to hear? Like, it's all about that journey of moving from the head to the body and letting go of resistance, because it's the resistance that we're trying to create to control our reality and say, well, I have to make this much money and I have to do this and I have to be that. And, you know, that's actually keeping us in resistance. And the moment we move to this place of surrender, um, and it's definitely been my experience because I've been a control freak for a lot of my life. Um, so and moving to that, that place of surrender just means that you have these complete, like, I, I feel like I, I live heaven on earth and I live a very magical life now. And, and, it's because I've surrendered to that journey. And I, it's almost like I've stopped trying to label what I know and can feel that's coming. Like, I just know it's coming. I'm not exactly sure what it is. And no, I'm not going to try and manifest X, Y, and Z. We've had an incredible um, experience in the business where we very consciously tried to co-create. Um, and I say try because it was messy and uncomfortable and exhausting for all of us. And we didn't hit our goals and we didn't do our thing. And then we shifted it up to just do everything in alignment. Our intention was to do it with ease and grace. Um, you know, we have very specific sort of mission, vision and values for the business. Um, and then we just let go and we're just like, okay, well, let's do that. And, and we've just um, had this amazing conversation. Like everything is going so well. And like my team and I just like, it's so weird because it's really easy. It's so easy, but it's that piece that you were talking about, like really letting go and um 
you know, just not trying to control our external reality. I love what you said about, because I've really noticed this a lot about the movies, like everything's starting to talk about the multiverse. Um, and I'm yep. loving hearing that because it's like, right, how do I access it? What do I do this? Like, can you access this through your, your, your abilities? Can you access all these, like consciously? Like, do you have any abilities to do that or that you know of? Well, when we're looking at the multi, multiverse, I mean, again, my limited understanding of, of just my own experience in reading is that the different realities that are potential are just potential. The dominant reality is the one in which you place a lot of your focus and emotional uh, the, the constructs in order to create form. But there is so many other potentialities around creating other realities. <laughs> so if you have a thought form, for example, that I'm going to go to this place today, but then something changes and you go to this place where well, you've just created a different reality. There was an initial reality of going somewhere, but it got changed. And now you're, you're a different branch of the tree, the same yeah. tree, you're a different branch of it. So I'm, I'm trying to create an analogy around the, the construct of different realities, but it's in like minutia rather than great big universe, different people, or same people, different personalities, because of thought forms, belief systems, and how you construct your tree and which branch you actually want to head off into. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love it. And it, it always makes me think, like it makes me think of, you know, um, I sort of do a lot of future self work. You know, I was actually saying yeah. to a private client this morning, like every January I write myself a letter from, you know, the end of the year me, and it blows my mind that even though I can be writing it and going, really, that I get there and I'm like, wow, you were spot on. Um, so I think that that's it, right? It's that yeah. it's almost like once we open the door to that potential that we can access our future self and our past self. I was saying again to the same client, like when I first did my training um, as a behavioral coach, you know, the, the story per se was that we're just changing the unconscious mind. We're just rewiring it, you know, um, with a lot of the, like the NLP work. So we're not actually changing the past, but we're changing the perception of the past. And the, the more years that I've done the work, I'm like, oh no, actually we're changing the past. Like, because it's all the same thing, right? It's all, it's all this energy piece. And I think that this is so incredibly powerful as we move into, um, from a human design point of view, we talk about the new paradigm that we're moving towards and it's a very different governing energy. It's, you know, it's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would like, like, and so, you know, we're moving from this in human design with the new paradigm we talk about, we're moving out of, um, this very hierarchical, uh, masculine, logical, um, it's been a time like the, 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 the great things that have happened has brought humans together. Like it's been a very tribal time. It's created a lot of the structure, you know, the legal system, the, um, the medical industry, education, you know, all of those sort of things. However, we're moving to this new paradigm, which is very different. It's, it's individualistic. It's abundant. Um, you know, it's it, like intimacy is a really big thing. Emotions, you know, don't control us anymore. We just get to experience them. And it's, it's, you know, a really different dynamic um, as we move towards that. And that's why everything's kind of up in the air because half of us are already there and, or not half of us, but a significant amount of us are there and that we're still trying to, you know, move through all of this. This sort of brings me to the question. And if you have anything to add from an astrological point of view, because I know from um, astrology, they, they also talk about like the age of Aquarius and what we're moving into. So I'd love to kind of hear about your um how you see this big shift that the i've gone really freaking deep with you oh my goodness you must be a deep human being so i'm like i want to ask you all the big freaking questions um from an astrological uh, from an astrological point of view i'll bring it back down to earth after this one i promise um from an astrological point of view do you want to do you work much with or um focus at all on this big shift that we're going through Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I do write a little bit about that. Um, there's the individual work and then there's collective work. 
so I, I wanted to start with all of the change that's going on is the different levels of consciousness that are in tension with one another. Before, as the collective tribe, it was kind of like on one kind of road. And now with what's happened with the C word and the, uh, the crazy kind of takeover or new world government, whatever you want to call them, yeah. it has divided many at levels of which they can integrate or accept and thereby think of it as all of a sudden many many different people speaking many different languages and not understanding one another which is causing a lot of chaos and upheaval as we are trying to get the pendulum back into a middle ground so that's the the, the the first thing I'd like to talk to the age of Aquarius mm. or should I say Pluto in Capricorn in its last degrees, destroying hierarchical structures and all ways of being, which is indicative of the structures in the individual's mind as they are being confronted by things that no longer are able to survive in an old 3D world. And so the astrological signatures are very much depicting the collective transition into I mean, commonly we hear 4D, 5D, but what is that? So as we're moving into this, yeah, this, this other state of vibrational acceleration on the planet, we are being asked to let go of the past, the trauma, the, uh, the egoic behaviours and dysfunction that no longer serve us that were connected to the old paradigm of existence. Mm. which we can call the patriarchal, we can call it hierarchical, we can call it enslavement, because this is so much about enslavement versus liberation, but not just from a practical physical level, but from a mental spiritual level. And so as people are awakening, uh, Pluto in Aquarius, and then we have lots of other Aquarian signatures, and we have uh, also Neptune in Pisces, we have this death going on of the old, and a new world is currently being birthed. And I'd like to give an analogy to that, mm -hmm. which I think your listeners will relate to. Whether you're in a relationship, whether it's been a partnership or a marriage, you, you go through a honeymoon period, you go through a stabilization period. And then if the relationship is not working, you will go through chaos argument until a decision is made. And then, the, you know, there's a lot of pain associated with making the decision, the arguments before prior to the separation as the separation occurs you're already starting to reinvent what a new world or you're being forced into adjustment and a new world and you are letting go of the past simultaneously it's messy it's it's heart-wrenching it's also there is elements of excitement because there is something new being birthed and a freedom that is associated with letting go of the old partner the old life and the old constructs because something has had to give way. And mm -hmm. then as you're moving in, maybe it takes another year for, an, for that adjustment to occur. And now we're in this phase of, I love my life or I love who I've become. I love what I've let go of. I would never go back to that. And so this collective transition that we're in as the world is kind of purging itself with us humans on it, we are right in the middle of that. We are in the divorce proceedings where we are looking forward to creating new systems. And when I say new systems, I'm talking about decentralized systems. So new ways of uh, you know, holistic health, education, currency is a big one because the fiat system represents, and when I say by that, I mean the cash system, represents the old hierarchical central bank systems that ultimately have control over all of us in a very, uh, in a Ponzi scheme that's really unfair and inequitable for all mm. to be able to contribute to. So what we're moving into is these decentralized systems where we're actually as uh, more centralized uh, economic hubs where we're going to call our own shots. We are going to decide how we actually transact and also have different forms of currency in which we can barter or we can transact with one another. That's, that's a, a big, huge part of dismantling the hierarchical old structures of being oh my god I love this like oh it's so good so one of my goals right is that like I don't to buy a house without a bank like we've bought houses before with the bank 
but I don't want to do that anymore. You know, we've sort of got into crypto. Um, we're investing, you know, the old school way as well. But I feel so strongly about what you've just said, you know, like because money is so deeply connected to our self-worth and yes, that's going to fall away as well. Like at least that's how we see it um, from a human design point of view, but at the moment it is, you know, and to one of the big things for me is that, that breaking away from, you know, the authority who tells you, you can have this much money and this is how you look after it. And this is how you invest it. And this is how you, you know, earn it and blah, blah, blah. So I totally love and resonate that with that. One of the big themes as we go into the new paradigm and for us, it's 2027. So we're in the, you know, the chaos time. Um, We are going into this energy and and the beautiful, so we have the cross, each incarnation cross, um, each individual has an incarnation cross. So yours is the, um, the the cross of consciousness. Okay. Um, And each era has this theme so the one that we're moving out of is this cross of planning and we're moving into the sleeping phoenix and the sleeping phoenix is all about rising from the ashes and i'm like oh my god that's just beautiful like we're really going into this time that's going to help the human race and mother earth rise from the the ashes and i just love everything that you said i think it's so 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 important um now I want to, now that you've mentioned money, because this is the thing that everyone always asks, right? It's always what they ask me when they come to get their chart done. What's my purpose? How do I earn more money? Um, so from an astrology point of view, like when people come to you, do they ask like, what? Are, in fact, let me stop babbling, start again. Um, when people come to you and ask you like, how do I earn more money? Or, you know, how do I get money working in my life? How can astrology help people do that? So the, one of the first things I'm going to be looking at is um, have you set yourself up to struggle with uh, money, scarcity, self, self-acceptance, um, valuing your gifts? So first I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. So there are signatures. Then I'll be asking, like, what's your challenge? Because obviously if someone's come to me, then I'm looking at the challenge that's presenting right now and I'll be able to deconstruct that challenge into beliefs, like what's what's inherently stopping you from wanting what you want, but something subconscious is actually, or maybe it's past life as well, connected as a signature that's preventing you from uh, creating and manifesting the wealth you want. And perhaps maybe you're misaligned. So my job is to understand where is it that the log is in the middle of the road and what tractor do we need to actually remove it so you can keep driving? I love that. <laughs> love so it. Then we, then what I do is, um, I take people through a memory retrieval because this is the magical part. And I think you experienced this as well in your session. Yep. That it's, it's, I can look at a cognitive level and start pulling apart your chart and, and looking at your challenges, but we're, where the real gold is, is where the person goes into their memory through, through my guidance and depicts a particular memory that is associated with the healing that needs to take place associated with what the desire is. And once that memory is brought up, then I'm taking them through a process to dissolve the emotions that are associated with that memory and reinstilling at a soul level, which is the really fascinating part, which I I, I know that you went through yourself, where these images start to come up for the client of, huh, that's what's happening now. And this is what's like, like right in front of my eyes. This is what my mother is uh, now doing, which would be contradictory to what the initial memory was. And so then I know that things are changing on a soul level, a very deep level for that person to rewire the past, let go of the past, nullify the past, whatever words um, are, are about not having charge with the past, so that the desire actually has the energy and the force to enact and manifest in form what you've asked for without the inhibiting hijacking force of a of the beliefs which actually have their own significant energy Mm. like a tug of war to to stop you from manifesting what you want yeah so that's that's what i'm looking at so it's it's a really deep interesting process that that i've come to work with that really is reliant on the client and their memory 
and their experience as I'm guiding it through through yeah through it I love that and like my experience the thing that I absolutely adore about you is that you bring all of it together you know you bring the woo the energy the spiritual with the like the cognitive training the, the the actual mind subconscious mind belief systems all of those things it's the same thing that I do and I think that sometimes people get misled because I don't think you can have one without the other I don't think you can go all woo and I don't think you can go all you know mind or brain that's right so I love 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 what you're saying and it was so cool doing the session with you because I remember for a moment there, I was like, oh God, I can't remember my, my memory. Like I've really wiped it. Like my neural pathway is even gone, but I just remembered um, the memory. And it was literally once you'd brought me to that point, I was like, shit, this pops up all the time. That image popped up in my head all the time. But because it was something that I thought was, well, in fact, I didn't even know like, like, like what was connected to it. I'd never paid attention to it. And as you took me through this process, you really helped me um, and the, the thing that I loved, this is the, the other thing, like I'm super excited about what you loved. It was a similar process that I'd been through a number of different times, but then what you did, I'm in the memory and I'm with my mother and you literally say like, get out of your body and get into hers. And that, that piece was transformational for me because as I was her and as she turned away, I could feel that that's it. She was done. She was over it. She's, and it was like, wow, like I had never seen my mother that way. And I'd literally gone through this process with you that I felt how my mother responded to that. And that it, it just, it totally set me free. And in, in a large part, like one of the things um, in my life, and I'm not sure if I actually told you this at the time, but um, I love my mom and I'm very grateful to have the parents that I've, that I've had you know, they were, they're, they're very calm and kind and, and all of those good things, but she is a little bit self-focused, let's just say. Yeah. Um, and one of the things is she's got older and we've had to put her um, in a, a care center because we can't care for her uh, here. God knows I tried, but in the end, I, I just couldn't do it. Um, and one of the things that we've done is that Justin, my wonderful husband, is actually like the primary person. And I always felt really bad. I was kind of like, well, I should be the primary person. Um, and the reason that I'm not is because I'm often working, you know, and she's just around the corner and we want to sort of stay really in touch with her and be really accessible. Yeah. So that was really the primary driver. And then one of the things going through this process with you that blew my mind was because I felt guilty about guilty about this. And in that moment when I was in, our, in her body and I almost went back to it a couple of times and I was like, oh my God, she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care if it's me or him. As long as someone, one of us is giving him attention, her attention, that's all that matters. And that experience was so transformational for me. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It just, it just says to me that you were able to let go of your guilt and, and really understand your mother's pain or your mother's um, uh, situation and perspective and then from there there's so much compassion and there's so much exactly letting go that can exactly occur. exactly yeah. so beautiful so powerful um, so one of the things I've always been curious about is this ability to look into your astrological chart and sort of see the the future per se like how do you do that I know it sounds like a really simple yeah. basic question but how do you do that well, I can only speak on my behalf because different astrologers have different ways of looking at that. But when I'm looking at transits, which are uh, planetary angles in the sky being made to each other, then that means something. And so I'm looking at that going, okay, well, there's a, perhaps there's a relationship coming in or you're actually working with letting go of um, signatures to do with family lineage that have not allowed you to express yourself so i'm looking at what's coming in now again psychological base um if you're looking you know whether you're going to get a new car or whether you're going to um, go on a holiday it's not the kind of astrology that i do it's always going to be psychological and evolutionary so when i'm also looking at the future because i do have that ability the intuitive side I will get the appropriate, and when I say appropriate, what you have given me permission on a level to see so that I can relate it back to you without disempowering you 
from getting too attached to something that is perhaps not right or is feeding a lack within the self. So I'm, that. yeah, so I'm being very aware and careful of that whenever someone is asking, for example, when is man coming into my life, which I do get a bit of that. Being yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. So it's not about that. It is about what is preventing you from allowing a man to come into your life that you are going to be fulfilled and happy with. And that usually comes down to what are you blocking around your own self-acceptance and thereby I'm seeing somebody that's coming into your life and then I'll see images associated with that and I'll get a feel for, for him um, and I'll even be able to describe him if that's what you are wanting me to know on a higher level so I can translate it to you. But first, we're going to go through what needs to change in order for you to accept such a man into your life. I love that. Oh, my God. Full responsibility. Yeah. I think this is one of the things that, you know, and and I sort of talk to this with human design as well. I think one of the things is that people jump out of one dogma and into another dogma, right? And they want something external or someone external to fix it for them. And this is the thing is like it, it doesn't matter how many astrologers you see or how many human design readers you see um, and they can give you all of these insights but until you take full responsibility it, it's just not going to happen it's not going to um, manifest the way you want it to manifest and I think that is so beautiful like like where is it and, and when you were speaking I was like oh what do I need to take responsibility for like that's the question you know and it's a question I often you know, deal with, or at least share with the, the clients that I work with, if I'm doing an unpack for them or private clients, whatever, it's like that, where am I not taking responsibility piece? I love that. It's, again, it's that I always talk about with um, the way that we're, we're conditioned is that the mind is leading and the mind actually, and the unconscious mind is like this incredible supercomputer except it only knows what's happening here on the third dimension. It doesn't know what's happening anywhere else. The body, the soul, like the wisdom that comes from, from there is like infinite and can access, access everywhere. And our journey, whether it's human design or astrology or whatever we, whatever we um, do is we have to take full responsibility and shift that. Like we have to shift into the getting, getting the initial leadership from the body or what we call the authority and, and strategy and authority um, so that we can then recondition the supercomputer between our ears so that it supports our alignment as opposed to us trying to use the supercomputer to keep us out of alignment or in fear or whatever as you say like the way that we were actually in the past we've been treated conditioned you know that's just what's happened whether it's through school governments media whatever it is to be the way we we are easily you know manipulated or controlled or whatever it is so I love everything that you're saying because it's, it's again, this thing that I'm constantly banging on about is like there is a definite, we have to do both. We can't just do just woo or just mind. We have to do both and they work really beautifully together. And we have to flip the leadership from the head to the body. Um, do you have anything you want exactly. to respond to on that? Well, yeah, you're very much talking about the ego and its programming and how it can override the body, heart, uh, soul level whispers and guidance that comes through the feeling nature and so it's so important to continue to give credibility and viability to the emotions that you're feeling as opposed to doing the right thing or going into a you know an old behavioral response say such as people pleasing you know like yeah. overriding your own needs even though your your body says oh no I don't want to do that oh but I will do that Okay, no, I, I I will, yes. And so that yeah, from that perspective, getting into your heart trumps every time. Yeah, I love it. So good. Oh my goodness, I just looked at the clock and we're like at time. It's been so amazing talking to you. So, Simone, how do people find you? Where are you? Social media, website, podcast, anything that you've got, please share. Okay, so the, the website is just Simone Gordon, S Y W M O N E Gordon.com. And uh, you'll find me on Facebook as well, Simone Gordon, and uh, TikTok, Simone Gordon underscore healer, and Instagram, Simone, Gaul so Simone Gordon as well. So, yeah, it's just the spelling of my name. I think that amazing. Yeah, it's it's a little bit different, and so yeah, you'll you'll find me under S Y W M O N E. 
I love it. I love it. And we'll put all of those links in the show notes so that you can find this incredible being. Go and freaking have a session. She's amazing. I loved it so much. And Simone, thank you so much for this conversation. Um, and we discovered in the weirdness that we're practically neighbors. We were actually at, we were, we drove through Pottsville on the weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have had you on the podcast and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And like, yes, I think we need to catch up. <laughs> yeah. Let's do coffee. Yeah. Cause there's some yeah. really big conversations. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much. I love it. Thank you. Thanks everyone else for being here. It's been super fun sharing this with you and I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.